Hey everyone, it's Father Richard Conlon here. I've titled this talk, Preach to Yourself, Proclaiming God's Truth in a World of Lies. A couple months ago, I was reading a great book by Pastor Craig Rochelle. It's called Winning the War in Your Mind. Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Very catchy title to this book. And he starts out the book by saying, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Think about that. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And Craig Rochelle bases this idea upon both God's truth revealed in sacred scripture and also the latest studies of neuroscience. So Craig Rochelle really gets into the heart of this key fact that our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So our life today, who you are today, is largely a result of the strongest thoughts you've had in your history. And your life going forward, who you're going to become, will largely be a result of the thoughts that you've had today and going forward. If you don't like the direction that your strongest thoughts are taking you, you got to do something about it. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. St. Paul is really saying that we have to do the work of changing our minds so that we can allow God to do the big work of transforming our lives. So once again, let's really narrow down upon this one key truth. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So if you don't like where your strongest thoughts are taking you, you got to do something about it. And if we can do the work of changing our minds, we can allow God to do the big work of transforming our lives. I'd like to share with you just three examples of how I've found this to be so true in my own life. As many of you know, I grew up playing competitive golf. And at the age of 15, I made a huge change in my golf career. At this point, I was on the Canadian national team, and I was definitely set on playing Division I college golf in the States, playing professional golf for the rest of my life. But Tiger Woods at the time, he had just made a huge change in his golf game. He changed coaches and he, he totally changed his entire golf swing. So I thought, if I want to take my game to the next level, I got to do the same thing. I have to totally change my entire golf swing. And at first, it got better. I really started to see results. But then I had one golf tournament, and for those golfers out there, you'd know how bad this is. I had one golf tournament where I shot 80, 81, 82, and I had 32 penalty strokes off the tee. So if any, there are any golfers out there, you know that that is, there has something fallen apart in how I hit the ball off the tee. And you might have heard in different sports, it was like, I had the yips. I literally had like the yips with my driver. And I started to think constantly, like I can't figure out my driver. Like the rest of my game is really, really good. It is just as good of any level as anyone in college golf, but my driver is just so bad. And I continually think again and again, like, oh, if only I could get my driver swing. Like, why am I so bad off the tee? And then I'd be playing around, it'd be going pretty well, and then I'd hit one bad drive, and the thoughts would just keep swirling again and again in my mind. Oh, you just can't hit your driver. You can't figure it out. Think about what that would be like. If those are my dominant thoughts that are continually swirling around in my mind again and again and again, what is that going to do? Remember I said at the start, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So if my strongest thoughts about golf is, I can't hit my driver, where do you think that's going to lead me? That led me to many, many years of hitting my driver crooked. I could never figure out my driver. And I just wished and hoped that maybe I'd come to a day in which I'd figure out how to hit my driver. But when my thoughts in my mind are continually again and again, why am I so bad at hitting my driver off the tee? Regardless of whether I had a good or bad day, those thoughts would keep coming back and back again into my mind. And as a result, 
Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. To this day, I still identify as someone who can't hit the driver that well. Now, if any of you have played golf with me, you'd say, Richard, you're exaggerating. But no, it's true that I had to quit playing competitive golf after university. And the number one reason, apart from having a huge encounter with God, was that I couldn't hit my driver to the level of playing professional golf. And that's a result largely of my thought pattern. Now, you might not be able to identify with this in the game of golf, but I'm sure there's something out there in your life that you could identify with. Maybe you were told when you were in elementary school that you were dumb or that you were ugly or that fill in the blank. You might have had some experience that really started to get deep in your mind. And whatever's going to consume our minds will control our lives. Remember, the key truth. Our lives are always moving in the direction of what? Our strongest thoughts. So if you identify with a lie that you're stupid, that'll just keep swirling again and again in your mind continually. And whatever's going to consume your mind will control your life going forward. So that's one negative example. Now I'd like to give you a positive example as well. As many of you know, I was ordained a priest this past December. And it was during a time of COVID. Now throughout all of seminary, I couldn't wait to be ordained a priest. There's so many reasons for it, but it would be so cool to have this enormous event at Holy Rosary Cathedral, a packed cathedral, have first mass celebrations where you have overflowing churches, and just on and on and on about how grand and beautiful and huge it would be just to have this great event of evangelization to glorify God. I just couldn't wait for it. And as you know, I got an ordination during the time of COVID. Now, Archbishop Miller said that I could delay my time of ordination if I discerned it appropriate to do so. I remember, though, one priest, Monsignor Greg Smith, hey, Monsignor, he said, I guess you were meant to be ordained during a time of COVID. This was a new thought for me. I guess you were meant to be ordained during a time of COVID. I guess God intended for you from all eternity to be ordained a priest during COVID. I guess I am meant to be ordained a priest during COVID. This was a new thought that entered into my mind. And this one thought, I continually made my strongest thought again and again and again. Anytime someone would say something negative or, oh, it's so bad that you're ordained during COVID, like you must feel so down about it. No, no. I am meant from all eternity to be ordained a priest during COVID. It's a new thought that radically transformed how I viewed my entire ordination ceremony. And this was amazing because this one new thought changed how I viewed my entire ordination. I guess I was meant to be ordained a priest during COVID. This one new thought created in my heart a space for joy, for peace, and for a grand celebration where I was aware that the cathedral was actually packed. It was full of all the angels and saints and they were having a big party for me. So that's a positive example of how our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So this one strong thought that I continue to think again and again and again, that I'm meant to be ordained a priest during COVID, it moved my life in the direction of a place where I had a beautiful encounter with God I was filled with a sense of joy and peace and purpose that from all eternity, God meant for me to be ordained a priest during COVID. So there's a positive example. And maybe you've had that as well, where someone entered into your life and said something so affirming, so beautiful about you, about your potential, about your identity. And that just led to this total change of perspective upon your life. Maybe the result of your job or a relationship that you're in could have been the result of one conversation. Someone said something to you, hey, wow, you have great potential in math, something like that. I know for my mom, she experienced that in high school, that someone recognized her potential for math and she became, uh, she got her calculus degree in university and then became a math teacher. One conversation about someone affirming you for the positive things that they see in you could change your life forever. 
and I've sure experienced it. I'll give you a third example, something that happened a couple hours before I came to you today. I was celebrating a funeral and it went super well. And just before I left, someone said, oh, Father Richard, I have a question for you. Why did you do fill in the blank? Why did you do this in the liturgy? I thought you were supposed to do something else. And you know when someone like you could get, you know, all straight A's in your report card, but then one grade is like a B or a C? Or you could have everyone praise you for some talk, but then one person says, actually, uh, I think you did this wrong. What happens in your mind? Oh, it's so easy just to think again and again and again about the negative thought. So from the time the funeral ended to the time I got here to record this, I've probably had about six to 10 times where that one conversation, that critique was brought back into my mind. And I'm realizing right now that if I make that a strong thought, if I continue to think again and again about this negative experience, it's going to change my direction going forward for the rest of my life. That's a scary thing. And I want to do something about it. Thanks be to God, I'm going to show you what I've done over the last couple months since reading that initial book from Pastor Craig Rochelle, Winning the War in Your Mind, change your thinking, change your life. And I'm actually going to do this with you. Craig Rochelle gives this really easy recommendation in the book in which he says, you need to write out statements of declaration, statements of faith based upon God's truth in scripture. He calls this the replacement principle. We need to change our negative thoughts in our mind by replacing them with God's truth in Scripture. Now you may be thinking, how, how do I do that? Thanks be to God, we're actually going to do it together. So, as I titled this talk, Preach to Yourself, Proclaiming God's Truth in a World of Lies, we're actually going to do this together. I'm going to give you the opportunity, it might be for the first time in your life, to actually preach to yourself. I'm going to share with you 33 statements of faith that I've written out as a result of reading Craig Rochelle's book, Winning the War in Your Mind, based entirely upon God's truth in Scripture, and we're going to do it together. The goal of this exercise as you go through is to rewire the way you think about yourself, the way you speak to yourself, so that you can replace the negative self-talk that you have with God's truth. So you're actually legit. You're going to say this out loud with me. And you're going to say it with passion. You're going to say it with conviction. You're going to say it like you really mean it. So that today could be a game changer for your life. Because remember, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So we're going to create some new thoughts today. And this is going to change your future going forward. So I'm actually excited to do this because as I just shared, I had that experience at the funeral and whatever I, whenever I experience negative thoughts in my mind, I keep going back to these 33 statements of faith that I have said. So they're going to come up on the screen and you're going to proclaim them to yourself. You're going to preach to yourself and this is going to be something very good. Are you ready? Okay. I am a soldier in the battle. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my arms for battle, who prepares my hands for war. In this exercise, I will wield the divine weapon of God's holy word to fight the good fight. And I will boldly proclaim the truth that God has revealed to me about my life. Number two, I am a warrior for the Lord. There is a war going on in my mind, and I will engage in this battle today. In this exercise, I will put on the mind of Christ and deliberately think about what is good, what is true, what is beautiful, what is loving. So here we go. Number three, I am a beloved son of the Father. This is not just a nice thing God says about me. 
This is my true and deepest identity. God is my father and I am his son. Number four, I am the cause of the father's joy. This is not some pious idea. This is the reality of my life. I bring joy to the heart of my heavenly father and he delights in me. I am God's masterpiece. This is not some proud statement. This is a fact that God has revealed to me. God has formed me in his own image and I am his treasured possession. Number six, I am fathered by God. The father is active in my formation. The father is committed to my growth and he is always fathering me. Number seven, I am cared for by God. The father knows me by name. The father knows my heart and he cares for me. Number eight, I am loved by God. The father holds nothing back in loving me. All that he has is mine. The father has shown me this love on the cross and given me this love in the Eucharist. And he is always laboring to love me. Number nine, I am rescued. The father has rescued me from the dominion of darkness. The father has transferred me into the kingdom of his beloved son. And he has claimed me as his own. I am blessed. The father has blessed me in Christ with every spiritual blessing. I don't have to grasp for anything. I don't have to prove myself to anyone. I have everything that I need because I am blessed. Number 11, I am chosen. The father has chosen me in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. My life has meaning. My life has purpose. I am chosen for great things in life. Number 12, I am a friend of Jesus. All that Jesus asks of me today is to be his friend and to live every moment in the grace of this divine friendship. Everything that I want and desire, all my happiness and all my holiness follows from friendship with Christ. Number 13, I am never alone. Jesus is with me, especially right now. Even if I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for Jesus is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Number 14, I am worth the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves me. Number 15, I am secure in Christ's love. Nothing and no one can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Number 16, I am not the Messiah. I do not have to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. I can allow God to be God and me to be me. Number 17, I am not my past. I no longer define myself by my past sins, flaws, failures, or brokenness. For I am a new creation in Christ, and God is at work in my life, making all things new. Number 18, I am no longer a slave to sin. I reject a life of sin and refuse to be mastered by it. For Christ has set me free for a life of freedom. And so I choose to live this day freely as a child of God.
Number 19. I am a temple of the living God. The Father has made his home in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus abides in me. Number 20. I am guided by the Holy Spirit. Today, I choose to follow the Spirit's lead in the ways of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Number 21. I am grateful. I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being and the wonders of all your creation. I praise you. I bless you. I thank you. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Number 22. I am fearless. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I am strong. I am courageous. I am bold. With God, I shall do bravely, and he will trample down my foes. Number 23. I am confident. I trust in Jesus' word that all things are possible for the one who has faith. And so, I place all my trust, all my hope, all my faith in Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number 24, I am sacrificial. I offer up and consecrate all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day for the intentions and the glory of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I choose to live sacrificially for the salvation of souls. Number 25, I am patient. I will not rush or hurry any task today. I will slow down and allow the peace of Christ to set the rhythm and pace for me. Number 26, I am present to this moment. I surrender my past to God's mercy and my future to God's providence. Only this present moment is precious to me. Number 27, I am a man of prayer. In prayer, I use the full power and authority of Jesus Christ to take captive every evil thought. In prayer, I engage in the most effective missionary work for the salvation of souls. For the prayer of God's chosen ones is powerful and effective. Number 28, I am surrounded right now by a great cloud of witnesses. Mary, Joseph, and all the angels and saints are cheering me on to run the race set before me today. And so I will lay aside every addiction, attachment, and wrong desire, and I will run this race with courage, conviction, and confidence. Number 29, I am consecrated to Mary. Mary is my spiritual mother. She takes care of me. And Mary is a warrior queen. She crushes the head of the serpent. Number 30, I am consecrated to Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph is my spiritual father. He provides for me. And Saint Joseph is a terror of demons. He protects me from the evil one. Number 31, I am protected by my guardian angel my guardian angel is a warrior from heaven who defends me from all evil. And my guardian angel is a saint maker who guides me in the paths of holiness. Number 32. I am on the journey. The Lord is my shepherd, and I lack nothing 
on the journey of life. As a pilgrim awaiting my true home in heaven, I embrace the journey that God has placed before me. And I will courageously pursue the dreams that God has placed in my heart. Number 33, and finally, I am certain that all things in my life today will work together for good. Yes, Lord, you can make everything in my life work together for a good purpose because you are that good and I love you. Oh, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver with these arrows. If the words in your head don't match up with the words we just proclaimed based upon scripture, someone is wrong. Can you guess who? If the words in your head, the thoughts in your head, the strongest thoughts you have don't match up with the words of God, someone is wrong. Who do you think it might be? Yeah, it's yourself. Just to get back into this key fundamental truth we've been speaking about, our lives are always moving in the direction of what? Of our strongest thoughts. And Craig Rochelle, I love how he gets into the neuroscience behind this, that he says that every thought in our mind creates a neurochemical change in the brain. And if you think a thought again, it creates what's known as a neural pathway. It's a way for our brains to save energy. You have a thought and it goes again and again, so it's easier to think that thought again and again. Think about the first time you drove, your brain was on overload trying to figure out everything, first time you tried to parallel park, but now it's a piece of cake. Why? Because God designed our brains in a way so that when we create a habitual pattern of thinking, it saves energy so we can focus on other tasks. Get back in the core truth. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And so if you don't like where your life is leading right now, or you don't like the thoughts in your mind, you've got to do something about it. You can't just play neutral and hope that you're going to have good thoughts. You have to actually engage in the mind. You have to enter into the mind, not by yourself, but with the power of God's holy word. And that's just what we did together. I do that practice every single morning before I say morning prayer. I commit myself to proclaiming each one of those words out loud. And whenever I come across a powerful word in scripture that speaks to me, I add it in. So literally this 33, uh, I call it the 33 I am affirmations exercise. That's just the name I put up for it. Those 33 statements of faith, 33 tweets about your true identity in God. It's something I update every single day because whenever I come to scripture, I'm anticipating having an encounter with God in which he speaks to me about my true identity. And it's something I deeply crave so that all of a sudden the thoughts in my mind are something based upon God's truth so that I actually can look towards my future with anticipation and hope and excitement because I know that my mind is being renewed upon God's word and not upon the negative experiences in my life or the lies of this world. And when I get upon to this idea about the lies of the world, this is not some weird idea. This is something Jesus himself experienced. Think about the beginning of Jesus' life, his ministry. What did he do? He entered into the desert. And why do the disciples have this uh, account? Because Jesus was teaching them what he did. Jesus showed them, guess what? When I began to prepare for my ministry, I entered into the desert and three times the enemy told me lies. And three times, here's what I did, guys. Here's what I did. I proclaimed the truth based upon sacred scripture. Just imagine how struck the disciples must have been. It's like, whoa, Jesus, like the devil spoke to you three times and these were like core lies. It was like, if you are the son of God, he was attacking your identity and what do you do? Three times you took scripture and you proclaimed back to him and then he ran away? The disciples must have been so struck by that experience of their master, their teacher, their Lord, showing them the way. So if Jesus did it, 
are we going to be any different? No. In fact, the devil is someone who's trying to ruin each one of our lives. Scripture says that the devil is the father of what? Do you know? Scripture says the devil is the father of lies. That's the name that Jesus gives for the devil, the father of lies. And how do lies affect us? There are thoughts that go into our minds. So there's a war going on in your life. You have an enemy, his name is the devil, and his target is your mind. And his weapon are lies. His goal is for you to believe the lies as if they were true so that they can ruin your life and prevent you from experiencing the glory that God wants for each one of you. And so maybe you've come to a realization that you can no longer play neutral in this battle. Maybe you realize that Scripture says that Scripture is the sword of the Spirit, and I've just had this sword kind of tucked away in its sheath for my whole life. Maybe you've been praying with the Bible in the Year podcast, and you realize, like, I really want Scripture to come alive for me. Well, this is an exercise that I've personally experienced in how sacred Scripture comes alive for my life. And so I encourage you, if you really want to change your direction going forward, if you want the Word of God to really soak into your mind, if you want to reclaim your life, your identity, then come up with this affirmations exercise that I've been doing. Actually take the words that I've used and they'll be ready for you in the PDF. Put them into a Word document and make up your own list. Some of them you probably like that I've put together and some of them you probably doesn't resonate. Honestly, make up your own list of statements of faith and commit yourself to saying them every single day. So often we wake up in the morning and people, what do they go for? They go for their phones and they look for the news and the news is just flooded with negative thoughts. For myself, over the last couple months, in the morning after I turn out my alarm, I open up my phone and I get the 33 statements of faith. And I commit myself to saying them out loud every single morning before morning prayer. And then if there's a time in my day in which all of a sudden I realize, okay, like that experience I had in the funeral, okay, I need to find an opportunity to start saying these statements out loud. And what I realize right now is that I feel much different after proclaiming those 33 statements of faith than I did walking into this room. And I hope you do as well. I hope you experience that there's something powerful about actually proclaiming the Word of God out loud. So often you come to Mass and you hear the priest preach to yourself for 10 minutes or maybe longer. How about if I do this exercise of preaching to you and you've joined me and then you preach to yourself for the rest of the week? What if that was the experience you had where all of a sudden you hear someone preach to you, the priest at Mass on Sunday, and then for the rest of the week you're preaching to yourself all week long? How beautiful and transformative that could be in your life. If all of a sudden the thoughts in your mind are no longer based upon the lies of the world, but are based upon God's truth. It's time to fight back. It's time to stop playing neutral in the battle. This is one of the most simple and effective ways that I have personally ever experienced in my life in which I start to reclaim my mind I start to change my way of thinking so that I can allow God to transform my life. If you desire a new direction for your life going forward, if you're fed up with the negative thoughts and lies that keep swirling around in your head, whatever they may be, it's time to stop playing neutral in the battle and it's time to engage in the battle. I pray that this experience is not just some talk you've heard and forget about, but it's actually a game changer in your life. I guarantee, if you start allowing your mind to be filled with the truth of sacred scripture, if you start changing your mind, God will transform your life. God bless you.